Tonight on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup, we head to Jackson Hole, Wyoming for a little adventure in the Grand Tetons. My kids are joining me this week to try their luck at a little polo, practice our riding balance, and do some acrobatics. So don't go anywhere. The show starts right now. Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. This week we're in Kelly, Wyoming at Red Rock Ranch. Homesteader Bill Redman, a worker for the U.S. Geological Survey, bought the property along the Grovant River in 1916. He didn't like the rapid population growth in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, so he set up a few miles outside of town. The ranch went on to be purchased by an owner of the Washington Post, and later an army pilot who flew bombing missions in World War II. Then, in 1974, David McKenzie found this little slice of heaven, hidden from the hustle and bustle of town, and fell in love. He agreed to one mandatory rule, he would never change a thing. Today, his daughter Carolyn and her husband Harley own this place, and their family has celebrated over 40 years as the stewards and caretakers of this vast and beautiful property. Hi! Welcome to the ranch, Debbie. We're so glad you're here. Hi. I'm Carolyn. Carolyn, nice to meet you. And I'm Harley. Harley, nice to meet nice you. To I meet met you guys you. at the Dude Ranchers Association, so it's so good to see you guys again. Thanks it's for summer. inviting us. Yeah, we got some good weather. So you're here at the ranch. Let's give you a quick little tour. Okay. Well, this is our ranch store. Okay. It's a circa 1920 building that my parents refurbished and brought up here. Mm -hmm. And behind, you see all the cabins? Yes. Same thing. It was a hotel in Jackson Okay. that went out of business. And when my parents bought the ranch, it was, it was their vision mm -hmm. to, to create a guest So that's ranch. how they got the idea, or they actually bought those cabins? They actually bought those cabins. They'd already they brought them here. And, wow. Yeah. So how long have you been running the ranch? Well, my dad passed away two years ago. Okay. And this is our second season without him. Well, we just have a whole new appreciation for what Carolyn's parents did, too. And uh, we mainly stayed on that, I call it that side of the irrigation ditch over there where the horses, because we're uh, very much involved with the horse program, but he had the, they had the, the whole picture and the vision, like Carolyn said. So it's, it's amazing to read through all the notes that he would write by hand to people and uh, and just get a feel for the depth of his understanding of what goes on here. The Red Rock isn't just a clever name. There really is a Red Rock. And it serves as a reminder for Carolyn and the legacy her dad passed along to her and her family. Did you guys bring it in or was it here? It was here uh -huh. and, and this was in 1974 when my parents purchased the ranch. Mm -hmm. There's a big cliff behind us. Okay. We do lots of hiking and riding up there, but yes, this is where this came okay. from. So, Debbie, let me show you where we're going to have the meet and greet barbecue tonight. Okay, this is when all the guests get here. Yep. Okay. And, um, Watch your head, Harley. It's just really, look at this view. Oh, this is amazing. So this is Sheep Mountain in front of us. Okay. And by the end of the summer, most of that snow will have melted. And the furthest peak is Crystal Peak, and okay. our river, Crystal Creek, that's where the headwaters are. And actually, Harley, you explain that better than I do. Well, what happened about what, five or six years ago, we were looking up on a Monday morning and a big cloud of dust came up, pillow, billowed up, and uh, part of uh, Crystal Peak fell. Wow, dammed up it. the Dammed up the Crystal Creek, not to a major extent, but uh, there is a lake, a new lake up there now. Wow! And we will go up there and ride. And we have a okay. ride that goes up there, and then this is Pyramid Peak over here on our right. Mm -hmm. And that's a so hike pretty. that uh, some of our more adventuresome guests can attempt. Yeah. And, that looks uh, like a so big hike. There's no lack of scenery, scenic hikes, I should say. But we do take a ride, or a, there's a trail that goes along up there called Wolf Ridge. Mm -hmm. There is the prospect of seeing wildlife up there as well. We might be doing that this week. Absolutely. The okay. kids love that ride. Yeah? Great ride. I hear you have an incredible kid program. We do. We feel that if we take care of your kids and they have fun, you're set. Yeah. I'm you excited. Are set. I brought my kids this week. I brought all three of them. Oh, great. So Good. I've got 21, 17, and 9, and they're all very, very enthusiastic about checking this place out. There's always something fun to do for the family, and the kids program has already distracted my son Cisco, 
He's made some new friends right away, and the campfire songs haven't even started yet. Well, my parents didn't want this to be a resort, okay? So they didn't want a tennis court, they didn't want a golf course. So this so, is their compromise, and this game, this is a crazy fun little game. You play with a wiffle ball, okay? You play two on a side, and you really got to hit it hard, and it's fun. And okay. It, and you, is Cisco your son? Yeah, he's going to love this. All right, he'll. this is where you find him. All right, so Debbie, check this out. This is our saloon. Okay, adult room. Cross wow. bench saloon. How cool is this? So when my parents bought the ranch, a theme was, what are we going to do with adults at night? So yes. they heard about this table for sale in Denver, oh. and it was shipped up. Okay. And our adult room used to be where the kids' room was. Okay. Long story short, we had to get the pool table over here and in the winter we just slid it over and we no didn't, way and we didn't crack the slate and this room was actually built for this table mm -hmm. here's our bar this looks like you know the evil witch mirror mirror on the wall well this Who is this, this piece is actually from natchez mississippi and it's a hall tree and my grandmother was from there and, oh, okay and when, nice. she, when she passed away there was some incredible furniture from yeah. her Annabelle and style home. And did you did get this? My mother did, absolutely. Wow. So that is a unique piece, isn't it? It's perfect for in here too, because hats, jackets, whatever. Throw it up here. Ropes. Yeah. <laughs> Gun belt. This is elk hunting territory, and the elk are so abundant that they shed thousands of pounds of antlers each year, so many that it has become a prominent decorative feature around Jackson Hole. We're going to have fun this week. When we come back, we'll do some team penning, play some polo, and see if my kids can handle horseback acrobatics. <laughs> right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. Nothing starts the morning right like a horseback ride to a hot cooked meal. But before we can mount up, the Wranglers have to get up extra early to prep the horses for the day of activity. Horses don't like mosquitoes any more than I do, so a quick spritz of this bug spray helps keep them happy. Everybody gathers to get geared up and ready to ride. You guys good? All right, everybody's looking good. Especially me, right, Wes? That's right. I wasn't gonna call you out, but... <laughs> So what are these mountains called around us, surrounding us? Up here is called Shorty's Ridge, and then back to our right is Sheep Herders with the red. Wow. And then back behind that to your right is the Lavender Hills. Uh-huh. And just right over this that you can't see, that you'll be able to see a little later, is uh, Sleeping Indian. Oh, okay. That's cool. <sighs> Breakfast is amazing, and nothing beats this view. Funny, even on a dude ranch vacation, I still am fixing plates for my kids. It's so beautiful. The river runs right through this property and it's so calming. I just want to curl up and take a nap. Well, breakfast isn't over yet though. Here we go, pancake oh. It's time for a little pancake toss. And now, not just a few, they're flipping and flying like it's raining pancakes. I do hope we have enough syrup. While the other kids enjoy a little wagon ride through the beautiful Lavender Hills, Spencer and I are gonna head down to the river for some fly fishing. It's one of my favorite pastimes and she wants to learn a few techniques from Carolyn's son, Joe Mack. What's been working now is uh, this purple ant. It's um, trout, for some reason they crave purple. Oh. And uh, no, yeah, they just see the color and they like it. And so this is a surface fly. It obviously sits on top of the water. And uh, no, yeah, they're just looking for that easy meal. So your grip's like this, right? Picture coming up with the rod and making a gap with your thumb. And so as you come back for your back cast, oh, your, you it yeah, your, your rod connects to your thumb. Okay. And then as it comes forward, you basically just push down with your thumb. Okay. So you make the gap, come back, and then push forward. Okay. Gap. And that gives it more power. Yeah, exactly, precisely. So what you're doing is you're flexing the rod tip, getting more line out cool. there. It's like a flick of the wrist. And precisely. I've done this enough to know that it doesn't come easy. But even if you don't catch anything all day, who cares? Look at this place. Okay, so recast. Maybe Honestly, too no, much. That was a little too much, but rod tip low. Okay. Let line out. Okay, you 
go. Guide over, guide over. All right, strip in. All right, now create that gap with your thumb and then recast. And hold on, yeah, hold, hold on, on here, with your left hand. Yeah, pinch. Okay. Nicely done. That was your best cast yet. Rod tip low. Let line out. Let okay. line oh, let, out. let, yeah, let that's it right. out. Let so, when you're in this white water area here, yeah, you want to be letting line let out. And then once you get kind of further down here towards, if this is 12 o'clock, once you get down towards like 4, 4, 3 o'clock-ish, that's when you want to start taking line in. But until then, in that zone, that's mm -hmm. when you want to let line out. Okay. So we cast. Nicely done. Remember, little carry too through much. a little bit with your rod tip. Get that follow through. Yep, I think Spencer's getting it. And you know what? I'm pretty sure she's having fun, too. Well, dinner is a really big deal around here. And Chef Alexander Gibson is a true culinary artist. You all had a chance to pick your entrees. There's a rosemary braised lamb shank, slow braised all day long, uh, over mashed potatoes and a lamb jus. There's a bacon wrapped chicken breast stuffed with mushrooms over a sweet potato couscous. Or there's what most of you chose, the pan-seared halibut with the lemon butter, the crispy shallots, and the cilantro lime rice. His attention to every detail is exquisite. Not just the taste, but the preparation, symmetry, and style. Needless to say, the guests love it. When we come back, we're going to learn to play one of the world's oldest team sports, right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. One of Carolyn's favorite morning rituals is to hike the surrounding hills of the ranch with her kids, or guests, or really whoever she wants. I'm always up for a little exercise, but uh, oh, I think Carolyn's been a little tough with me. Polo is a horseback mounted team sport known as the sport of kings. It's popular around the world and is even played professionally in 16 countries. Nice shot, baby. Okay, we've got to get used to swinging these clubs first. So Harley gives us some on the ground instructions before we saddle up. Okay, so we're going to do what we call a forehand shot, and the ball is on your right-hand side, and make sure that your mallets are flat. Okay, we'll pass it around hitting the forehand Cisco. shot. Coming to you. And just like in uh, tennis, we can do what they call a backhand, and in polo it's called a near side. <laughs> can work some of that energy off now. All right, so in the real game of polo, we can hook each other's mallet. So Spencer, if you just take a little swing at it, I could come in here and do this. You're allowed to? I'm allowed to. If I'm on the same side. I can't come over here and go like this. That would be hard with a horse under you. Well, it happens. All right, well done, well done. Okay, this is a lot easier to do on foot, but riding a horse adds a lot of new challenges that change the whole dynamic of this game. Now that we've gotten the swing of things, yeah, your, Carolyn is going to step us through an obstacle course and training class called Top Hand. All right, so you're going to ride the bridge lengthwise towards Matt. Okay. And you're going to halt in the middle. Okay. Okay. She got a nice halt. Now walk on. Good job. So we'll encounter some of these obstacles on a trail. That's okay. why we like to mess around, yeah. have fun. So this is the new the new um, drill, you guys. She stopped paying attention and she let her horse eat. So Maddie's going to halt Lakota with two feet on the bridge. She's going to walk on. She's going to halt in the middle of the bridge. And she's going to walk with her two front, go forward with the two front feet off the bridge. There you go. So it's a oh. lot of stopping. Yes. And you notice she was really smooth and rhythm in rhythm with her horse, okay? Okay. That's what we want. Okay. First two, right? Yep. Okay. 
So remember, your horse doesn't know what's going on. So it's all about the communication. I don't well know done. about that. Let's try this again. I said, now stay. Perfect. Now walk forward. Stay. Here, I'm gonna help you. A little bit further. Yeah. Stay. Keep them. I'm gonna tie Did we do it? Have good all right. Steering. We did it! Red Yay! Off does know. That's good. Who's <laughs> next? Here, we practice riding our horses on rough, uneven, or unbalanced terrain. Playing polo requires you to lean over, shift your balance, and swing a mallet. So this practice is really valuable for my young riders. And, and, and me too. <laughs> Harley takes us through the steps and walks us around and around, taking turns with forehand and then backhand shots. Keep a hold of your reins. He's got the idea. Well done. Well done. Notice how your saddle's listing to the right a little bit when you reach down. So pop your saddle over like your mom's doing so that you can look down and see the saddle horn right in the middle. If that saddle horn gets off one side, then you know you better straighten it out sooner than later. <laughs> All right, enough practice. Let's give this a shot. Well done. Nice. Good job. Keep the ball in front of you a little bit, off the shoulder. Oh, good job. Okay, here I come, here I come. We'll try to get it from you. That was so Whoop. much fun. We're so good at this. I'm so good at this. I think I'm gonna have to take this dog and pony show on the road. Oh, speaking of dog and pony shows, we wrap up the day with a little fun before sending the horses back to the pasture. First, a little horse painting. Push hard. Okay. <laughs> so good. Then the kids put on a little exhibition of the fancy moves they've been practicing all week. So Cisco, my little rule breaker, gets right up on there and goes straight to floss. Spencer decides to take a crack at it too. Not bad for someone who didn't even practice. When we come back, team sorting, a fancy dinner, a show, and one last surprise for the kids, right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. Now it's time for some team sorting. Here at Red Rock, they've got more than a few cowboys who know what they're doing. The question is, <laughs> can they handle my kids? All right, folks, here we are. This is uh, my favorite day. We get to play with the cattle. So what we're gonna do is uh, play the game of team sorting. And we're gonna do it with a team. So there's gonna be three of you on a team and I believe uh, a wrangler is gonna pitch in and help. You gotta work as a team to get these cows, the one that you want, moved up. We're gonna move them up into that upper pen up there. And you can only have one cow past the halfway point at a time. If you get two, you can't get the first one in the pen until you get that second one back behind the line. The first person that goes into the cows is the cutter. And you guys can, uh, once your team is figured out, you can figure out who's gonna go in first as the cutter. <clears throat> so you're gonna try and work out one cow at a time. And, and the best thing to do is use your fence line. Use your fences to push that cow up. And you wanna stay behind your cow. You don't wanna get ahead of it because it's gonna stop and turn back on you. So. It is a timed event, so there is uh, you know, a winner in all of this, but uh, we're gonna still go in slow motion. We don't wanna chase the cows. We don't wanna lope our horses. You're allowed to trot. We're gonna be our own family team today, and they're timing us, so I'm gonna whip these rookies into shape real quick. What do you think I was gonna let them keep me from winning? <laughs> Hardly. All right, guys, I'm gonna be your coach. So who is going to be I'll cut the cutter? First. You're going to cut? First, yeah. Okay, so you're going to be in the second spot, and you're going to be the closer. So you're going to be about three quarters of the way right up here, and you're going to be a little bit further down. And Debbie, you'll go with me, and I'll get you started. Okay. So come on up, Spencer and Stoney. Stoney, I want you I right counted. about there. And Spencer, I want you right about right here. So what the goal is is we're going to bring it down that fence line, 
And once I bring it up to you, we're going to work it up together to help Stoney put it in the pen. So Stoney, when ready. it gets here, don't let it get right, anywhere so I'm gonna past go. here so you just, push it that way. When I peel, peel one off of here, all right, so don't cut him Stoney, off. Do your job. All right, now Stoney, follow him up. Follow him up. Go ahead. This follow is him practice. Up. Stoney, come in. Stoney, come in. Don't don't cut him off though. Here we right go. there. All right, ho, right there. Working out. All right, as now a team put now, pressure on him. Come on. Up, up, up. Drive good Stoney. Job. All right, there we go. Let's go back. Good job. Good. All right, Spencer, you go in and cut one out. Oh, they're doing great. And we gotta keep them moving. Wait, are we timing right now? Yep, go. you're you're on on the clock. Go. Well, not yet. It's not okay, until go she ahead. Says it. Go. Okay. Okay, so they switched cutters. You stay right where you're at. There right we there. go. Look at there. Nice. All right. A sister. Turn. Turn. Nice. Spencer. Turn. 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 Drive up. All right. Let's let Very Stoney good. help. Good teamwork. Hold work. on, Mom. Push, Spencer. Push, Spencer. Push, push, push. Now, Stoney, go forward. Drop your hands. Go forward. Go forward. Good job. Uh, Stoney, you come down and cut one out. Drop All right, down. I'm going to switch cutters again. This is good. These guys are doing a good, good demonstration for us. Go get one, Stoney. So just peel one off the front right there, Stoney. Good job. Right You're going good. All right, you want to get Taking that one right time. up there. Look Don't at, let look him at the go back. you want to get. Work them easy. Now turn right. Turn right. Turn right. Turn into the cow. Turn into the cow. Don't be greedy. All right, now get this one. There we go. There we go. All right, let's push him up. All right, come up. Push. Push, 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 come on. Push me, you're gonna push them on up. We got a potty break here. Push, 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 let's all push, push, come on. Push. Look at that. Spencer, cut. Spencer, okay. let's go. Come on, Spencer. Let's go get him. All right, go, drive. All right, come up, Stoney, come up, Stoney. Perfect, now go. Ha, ha. Look Good at job. That. Look at that. Right. Stoney. Good job. Good job, guys. Good job, team. That was awesome work, you guys. We got four. Teamwork. I didn't know we got four. Did he get one? We got three. You got one, didn't you? We got four. Well, kind of. It's all right. I'm on your team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty proud of Stoney and Spencer. They handled this with ease. Not too bad for a couple of noobs. The last night is always the hardest. Dinner was great every night, but knowing it's our last meal at this amazing ranch, it just, it gets me a little teary-eyed. So, of course, they put on a show for us to brighten the mood. <laughs> what else? After these crazy annex, it's time for the awards ceremony. This is a really great way to make the whole trip memorable. Even me and the kids got a little special gift. So I wanted to award your family with some really fun things. So I kind of think that's like, maybe, maybe you know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Got a little swag here for you, darling. That's Thank really you. nice. Your first pair of gloves. And you earned your patch. Oh, oh, oh this is my right way. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. And it's thank you, teacher. all of you, for letting us come into your week vacation because I know this is huge for you. You've got your entire family, but thank you for allowing us because I mean, it couldn't have worked out better. We felt like part of it, and it was so exciting. So I'm so excited. Thanks for being in our episode. Awesome. Yeah. This is the part where I say my time here has been unforgettable. I know I say that a lot, but when you're lucky enough to visit the most beautiful places on earth for a living, it kind of sticks with you forever. Well, that's it for this week. Please join us next time as we roam the countryside looking for the best dude ranches all over America, right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. When you're ready to book your Dude Ranch vacation, visit our website for more information. And don't forget to tell them you saw it right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup.